Hey fam, today we're going to look at how to do local embeddings with Llama Index. We'll be working through an example to illustrate how this is done. Our example focus on a Q&A use case. Different use cases will have different requirements. Q&A is the most suitable for local embeddings. Summarization would use a different index structure where embeddings would be less important. The reason embeddings are less important for summarization is that for summarization, all the content must be parsed by the LLM. You can't summarize only based off a chunk of the data. You really need all the data in order to summarize it. Together, we'll code a solution that will allow us to ask questions based on YouTube videos. All right, so the code has six main pieces. First, we scrape the transcripts. We then use a local model to parse our transcripts. The results are stored in a local embedding database, a vector database. We then query the index with whatever question we desire. The results of the query are then sent to ChatGPT. And finally, ChatGPT Chat returns a synthesized answer. The packages we'll need are Alma Index, ChromaDB, OpenAI, and YT Transcripts. These will also bring in their dependencies. The most relevant parts of my local setup you should be aware of. WSL running under Windows 11. Honda environment with Python 3.10. And an NVIDIA GPU with 6 GB video memory. With a different setup, you may run into some errors and feel free to drop any question in the comments section below. Now the model we're using is the default one. There may be better models already available but I just thought I'd mention this for completeness. Now in terms of file types, I'd recommend only using the same sort of data per index. If you got different types of files, for example, spreadsheets, PDFs, or maybe a database, it's best to separate indexes. But if they're similar in nature, for example, a PDF or a text, a markdown document, these are all documents. These can be combined. All right, now let's get into it. First, let's start our code off with our imports related to the YouTube transcript scrapes. Now, for the scrapes themselves, we'll parse a text file that contains numerous YouTube links. These can be safely copy-pasted directly from YouTube. The script here, will clean up the URL and extract just the ID, so we don't have to do this now each time, because the YouTube API um, package uh, specified here, it requires IDs, so that's why we're cleaning up the URLs in order to obtain the IDs and then parsing these transcripts and saving them to a local text file to do our embeddings. Now, moving on, we got our llama imports here. The two parts I want you to focus on first, the GPT vector store index and the storage context specified in the first part here, GPT vector store and storage context, and then also the hugging face embeddings. So this library gives us access to uh, all the hugging face models, basically, to run our embeddings. You'll see what I mean later. Uh, you can also enable the logger optionally it's up to you. This can help you troubleshoot issues if you're running into errors and stuff like that. But yeah, this is how you would activate it essentially. And then also pass this to a service context that you can check this out in the documentation. We won't be going too far into this and it's not actually included in the code, but I wanted to kind of bring your attention here. Now, before we run the embeddings, we should configure the database. Here we use ChromaDB, but you can use any of the other supported vector databases if you wish. Now, this is the important part of the script. This is where we specify our embedding functions and the model we'll be using to parse our data and also later to embed our query question for comparison. Hard coding the chunk sizing and configuration is optional, but this can help if you need to reduce the size of each chunk being passed over to the LLM. Possibly if you're hitting token limits or similar or just getting a bunch of errors, this can kind of help maybe isolate some of those and reduce the chunk size. So the LLM is basically receiving smaller chunks and is able to spend more tokens on uh, response generation. Because, yeah, sometimes you'll see that come up from time to time. Now, the default chunk size is generally sufficient for most use cases. But I just, again, wanted to kind of be complete here and bring this to your attention. And this is another important part. This is where we can figure the predictor and how the query should be being run. It's where we specify the LLM configuration and also pass in our embedding model that we've used. Now, parsing our data. After everything is configured, it's time to parse our data. Here, this is done with a simple directory reader function. The data is parsed, the embeddings are created, 
and the results are then stored in a vector database. Finally, it's time to run the query and get our results. Here, you can see we're also specifying similarity top k equals 4. This means that there's going to be basically four chunks pulled out of the vector database, similar to the uh, question embedding, and then those are being passed as context. Typically, one may be enough, but I just wanted to, again, include it here for completeness. For reference, here's the folder structure of everything. And here are the results of running that query with some transcripts already saved and downloaded to the project and the kind of response that it's giving us. And again, you can see here that it's used out 4,170 tokens. Again, if you reduce, if we go back to this slide here, if you reduce similarity top K, or if you don't set it at all, it's going to default to one, and the token size is going to be smaller because it's not going to be using as many tokens to read over our context and then generate our response. Now, hope you found this useful. Thanks for tuning in. See you on the next one.